All right, so this is Milan Milan, and today I'm asking you the question: What's in your heart? Stay tuned. We're gonna get through some scriptures. I am reading from the Scriptures Bible. It is online, in case anyone was wondering, like I was. So we're gonna get it. So we are here now. Before we really get into it, I just want to give a quick background of why I'm reading out the scriptures. So a while back, I purchased this Bible. It was off Amazon, of course, right? Everything I got in this house is like Amazon. Anywho, it was on Amazon, and I got this Bible mainly because the more I went into study and started really learning who my God is. He is a Hebrew, and you don't need to read Hebrew in order to read the Bible, unlike some other religions. And I really don't even like calling it a religion for the simple fact I just follow him. I don't claim to say I belong to a religion. I belong to him, the Most High. So, with that being said, him being a Hebrew, I want to know more. In that close as I can get the language, right? So when I got this Bible a while back, I noticed that all of the books in our love letters are Hebrew. However, it does have English, so you know what book you're in, right? And the names of the people in our love letters, their names are in Hebrew. Our Messiah. Name is in here in Hebrew. So for the longest, and even today, I'm still like looking and comparing this against just straight English version, so that I know. Okay, this is who they're talking about. Okay, this is you know what I mean. So I just want to make that clear. Now earlier today, I had this set out right that I was gonna do this、um, through the blue letter Bible. I love the Blue Letter Bible. I have nothing against it. However, it is in Hebrew, and I was wondering if this Hebrew Bible, printed hard copy, was online. Guess what? It is. So it's literally online, and that's what we're reading out of today. So if anyone is questioning, like, hey, what is she reading? Where? Is... I don't see that in this Bible. Whatever version you're reading. If it's not the scriptures, that's why. But it would be good to go ahead and read it so that as I go through the scriptures Bible, right? Still, I love letters. You can see the words, the way I was studying, having the English version and then the scriptures, right, right next to it. So then you'll be able to see where Elohim is used. You will be able to see where Messiah is used. Like it is amazing. So now that that's out the way, let's get to this. What's in your heart, right? So, what's in your heart is what's going to drive you to how you live your life. You do things for yourself, or are you doing things for a Messiah? Okay. So we're gonna have some scriptures. As you can tell, all through this this、uh, description of this podcast、um, episode, it's some scriptures. So I got. Hope you are ready. <laughs> If I can stop getting tongue tied, I hope you're ready. I'm like super excited. Okay. So first, we're starting in Proverbs four. And it's verse twenty three. So Proverbs four twenty three says, "Watch over your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the sources of life." And then we stay in Proverbs, and now we're at six, verse twelve through nineteen. I got this. This is something else I just learned today. Okay, so verses six. 
um, chapter 6, I'm sorry, verses 12 through 19, it says, A male, a man of Bilal, a wicked man, walks with a perverse mouth. Now, let me just stop really quick. This word, I was like, what is this? Bilal? How do, how do I say this? I want to say this right. Okay, so hopefully the recording doesn't stop. I'm about to actually play it off of Google because I searched for it. And then I'm going to tell you what it means. Sorry, Bilial, a man of Bilial, a wicked man, walks with perverse mouth, winks with his eyes, shuffles his feet, points his fingers, perverseness is in his heart, plotting evil at all times. He sends out strife, therefore his calamity comes suddenly, instantly he is broken and there is no healing. These are six matters Yahweh hates, and seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands shedding innocent blood, a heart devising wicked schemes, feet quick to run to evil, a false witness breathing out lies, and one who causes strife among brothers. Guys, let's continue. We're in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, and it says, Overthrowing reasonings in every high matter that exalts itself against the knowledge of Elohim, taking captive every thought to make it obedient to the Messiah. Amen. I added that. That's, that's me. Amen. All right. Colossians 3 and it's verses 5 through 15. Therefore put to death your members which are on earth, pouring uncleanliness, passion, evil desires, and greed of gain, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of Elohim is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you also once walked, then you lived in them. But now also put off all these, displeasure, wrath, evil, blasphemy, filthy talk from your mouth. Do not lie to each other, since you have put off the old man with his practices and have put on the new one who is renewed in knowledge according to the likeness of him who created him. Where there is not Greek nor Yehudite, circumcised and uncircumcised, foreigner, Scythian, slave, free, but Messiah is all and in all. Therefore, as chosen ones of Elohim, set apart and beloved, put on compassion, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, patience, bearing with one another and forgiving each other. If anyone has a complaint against another, indeed, as Messiah forgave you, so also should you. But above all these, put on love, which is a bond of the perfection. And let the peace of Elohim rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body and be filled with thanks. And the last one is going to be Romans 8, verse 13 through 17. Should I say verses 13 through 17? So it reads, For if you live according to the flesh, you are going to die. But if you live by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body you shall live for as many as are led by the spirit of elohim these are sons of elohim for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out abba father 
The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of Elohim. And if children also heirs, truly heirs of Elohim and co-heirs with Messiah, if indeed we suffer with him in order that we also be exalted together. So listen, I wanted to go over this and explain what is in your heart is how you will live. If you're living for yourself, if you're living for your job, if you're living for your family, that is what your actions will lead you to do. If you're living for the one who created you and all in this world, then everything in your life is going to reflect him. And if you're reflecting him, you're not a selfish person. You're not a person of wrath. You are not speaking false things about people. You're not sitting around gossiping about people. You are uplifting people. You are having compassion. You have love in your heart. You see people differently as Christ sees them. If you're living for them. So what's in your heart? So when we look back at the scripture and I said I wanted to go ahead and go over this part. It was the second um, one that we went over, which is Proverbs 6, verses 12 through 19. Y'all know this is talking about the devil. So when I look at not not the devil, like the devil is like whipping you. The devil is the one that's like go ahead, go ahead and do this, giving you the go ahead green light, right? So when I look at it in the Blue Letter Bible, it literally has it titled, The Wicked Man. I don't know if it's more than needs to be said, but literally it's The Wicked Man. When I look it up on Google, they just gave us that beautiful um, hearing of how you pronounce the word, the pronunciation. At the bottom, the definition is a name for the devil. Y'all, this is a name for the devil. Understand, let's not be deceived. He don't want nothing good for you at all. So it may, and I hate when people say, the devil bless too, because he don't bless, okay? Only the most high can bless. The devil brings along opportunities that look like blessings. He brings along people that look like they're going to benefit your life in the in obviously a way that is pleasing to the most high. But if you remember in Genesis how our father spoke about him that he is cunning. He really a little tricky little thing. If you know anything, when you read this love letter, he is, uh, he's never gonna bring it to you like it's a bad thing. It is a bad thing, but that's not how he's presenting it to you. So try to understand that just because it looks good doesn't mean it's from the most high. That's why we need to be connected. That's why our hearts need to be drawn to him. That's why he needs to lead us. His spirit, his Holy Spirit lives within you once you accept him as your savior. Once you have repented of your sins, because we are all sinful people, right? Once you accept him and his ways, everything he hates, you're going to hate. And everything he loves, you're going to love. And you find such a displeasure of injustice. And that's what I had to tell you. What's in your heart? That's how you know if you're living for him or if you're not living for him. What's in your heart? I believe it was one more I wanted to touch on. And it is. It's the last one. It's in Romans 8. And so if you read it where it has in verse 13, spirit is capitalized. That is talking about the Holy Spirit, which is his spirit, which is a person, one of the persons of the Godhead. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
So one other thing I also wanted to touch on, so this wasn't the last part, but when I was reading through the Blue Letter Bible today, and at first, like, you know, how you make plans, and then God's like, er, this is what we finna do. So that's exactly what he did to me today. I thought I was gonna read out of the Blue Letter Bible. Uh -uh. We read now the scriptures, and truly, I'm gonna tell you this, I'm like, just this goosebumps, this smile, it's just, I, I can't stop smiling. Um, it's so beautiful how he pulls you and guides you in the direction that you should go in. So, I don't know who this is for, but obviously someone needed to hear this because I was going to read it offline, but you should have a hard copy Bible. We don't know how long we're going to have the internet services. Y'all see what's going on with this world, but before I get off track, when I was in the Blue Letter Bible earlier today and I was looking up, it said God, right? It said God. So actually, let me go to it now. I believe it was when I was here. It is. And so it said God. So right here in Romans 8, verse 14, in the Blue Letter Bible now, just so that you understand, if you were following along with me in the scriptures, it's going to sound a little different because I'm reading out of a different version. So in Blue Letter Bible, Romans 8, verse 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. So I'm like, okay, they keep saying God, God, God. And I understand, yes, God. Why are they not saying his name? So when I look up God, this is what I found. Well, I look up this verse, and this is what I found. So in Blue Letter Bible, it breaks down kind of like every other word. Sometimes it's every single word. And when it says of God, it is G2, 2316. That's the Strong's Concordance number. So when you click on that, okay, it goes further on to say a God a, or a goddess, which I don't like goddess, a general name of deities or divinities. The Godhead Trinity. A, God the Father, the first person of the Trinity. B, Christ, the second person of the Trinity. C, Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. So I remember the other day I was having a conversation. I was like, where is the actual word Godhead in the Bible? I was trying to find that verse because that's what a lot of um, people from other faiths say, well, Godhead isn't even in the verse. You made that up. You know, you tr made Trinity up. You made that up. Okay. I do believe Trinity may be kind of crossing hairs with the uh, Catholic doctrine, but I will say the Godhead is definitely biblical, and that is how our how how we can break down the three persons being one God. Because again, other faiths will say, "Oh, you got three different gods." No, we don't. We have one God that has three persons, and I just broke it down: the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. They all agree all the time. They do not contend with one another, not ever, nor never have, never are doing that and never will. And I probably didn't say that right, but I'm sure you get what I'm trying to say. They have never disagreed. They are all one. They're connected. It's one God, just three persons. So when I think of, um, our Father, and I'm going to wrap this up because I'm not trying to keep you too long, but I look at it and I say like this, and this is just the most beautiful, the most beautiful um, way I can, I, 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 okay, so we have God, the right God, one God. He is amazing. He sees all. He knows all. And he is all powerful. Like, all powerful. Okay? So we know he's all of that. We know that there's nothing that he doesn't know. We know there's nothing that he can't do. Right? 
Okay. So we got all of that together. And so we look at the father sent his son, which is Christ, to offer salvation. Because he knew without him sending his son, who is perfect, who is also God, who has two natures, two, human nature and spiritual. Okay, divine, sorry, divine. Divine and human. I would say he has two natures. Knowing that those sacrifices they were doing was not going to suffice. Knowing that we need an unblemished sacrifice, which is Christ. So he comes into his world, but because he is so holy, he cannot enter into sin. And that is why he has, I see, he has two natures. So he has his human nature. He's able to understand and he is allowed, I would say, to be around sinful people to explain to them how they can get back to him. Because you know, he was God literally walking among his creation. And when he was about to depart, what did he do? He warned his disciples. He let them know. So he let them know who was coming. Who is coming? The third person of the Godhead, his Holy Spirit. So now his Holy Spirit lives within us. And it was then and it is to this day. Those people who followed him have the Holy Spirit. The people before us, after the biblical times, have the Holy Spirit. Today, we, us, me and you, we have the Holy Spirit. We've accepted him as our Lord, as our Savior, as the Messiah, as the creator of heaven and earth and everything in it. He is Alpha and Omega. There is no end. He's always existed, so there is no beginning. So when he was birthed through a woman, that's the way he had to come in order to be here among his creation. And you remember she was a virgin, so she wasn't like touched at all. Okay. No man knew her until after the birth of Christ because he did have earthly brothers because they came from the same mother but the father of Christ was not earthly okay so the way I look at it just to try to recap and really make it make sense and bring this home our God is awesome And he knew the way for us to be joined back to him was for us to have an unblemished sacrifice. And that's why he is known as the lamb, the sacrificial lamb. He came into his creation. He dwelt among us, literally did a whole series on this when he walked with his creation. And... He then went to the cross as the sacrificial lamb for all of our sins, past, present, and future. He died on the cross humanly, but then he rose again, and now he's our high priest. And when he had left us physically, he's always with us because of his Holy Spirit. So he's never leaving you. He's with you always in some form. He has not left you nor forsaken you. Do not be dismayed. Do not feel like you are alone in this world. Do not feel like no one understands you. Do not feel like you are just left to hang like a dirty rag, okay? (laughs) He loves you. He provided a way out. If you believe in him, 
if you put your trust in him. If you repent, he is sure to save you. Because I guarantee you, when we leave here, we still going somewhere. Our soul is going somewhere. And the beautiful thing is we actually have free will to decide that. You're either going to go to hell or you're going to be joined with the Father. There's no nicer way I can put that. This is the truth. So, if you read with me in Romans 10... And it's verses 9 is where we're going to start. And again, this is Blue Letter Bible now that I am in. It says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. We literally could stop there if we really wanted to. Because it just seems to me... that that's sufficient, right? But we're going to take it further. And I'm actually going to re-finish this up out of um, the scriptures. All right. It says that if you confess with your mouth the master Yahweh and believe in your heart that Elohim has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. Because the scripture says, whoever puts his trust in him shall not be put to shame. Because there is no distinction between Udai and Greek. Udai is Jew. For the same master of all is rich to all who call upon him for everyone who calls on the name of Yahweh shall be saved everyone calls on the name of Yahweh whoever calls on the name of Yahweh shall be saved the reason that I switched is because I just remembered when I read out of the blue letter Bible it has his name as Jesus Christ and I am here to tell you through my learnings his name is not Jesus we can talk about that another time don't jump in my comments with the stuff okay we will talk about it peaceably <laughs> another time his name is Yahshua Yahshua. Actually, let me break this down. Yahshua is his name. Yah. For Yahweh, Shua, meaning salvation. You understand? Salvation. Now, I get it. We have grown up, at least most of us, me included, using the name Jesus. He has grace. But as you come into the understanding of what his name actually is, I just see it as a disrespect to continue to go back to my old ways and call him the name that I was taught that is not correct. Does that make sense? That's kind of like how you teach your child how to do something. Now they've learned the correct way to do something, but they gonna go back and still do it the way they used to do it because maybe it was comfortable to them. Maybe that's just how they grew up. Maybe that's just what it was. They just don't feel like changing. They just, do you not see that as a disrespect? Like, hey, little buddy, I just, I just taught you how the right way to do it. So therefore, that's me. I'm that child. My father has shown me, he's revealed it to me, what his name is 
So to use what I was taught younger before he revealed to me, it feels to me like disrespect. And that's all. I want to use his name. I love his name. The meaning of his name. Everything about him. I love. And I'm sorry I kind of kept you right. (sighs) Study your love letters. Because he wrote them for you. like 30 minutes is not long enough these days okay so what i said was we are gonna talk about his name and we will so i am studying if you know if you've been keeping up with me i've started a wednesday um wednesday podcast so every wednesday night you can catch the podcast it has videos so yay for that the short videos no longer than 10 minutes is what i try to do and they are Wednesday nights, 8 p.m. And now, you know, here we are. You're listening to a Saturday afternoon, 12 p.m. podcast. And it's always going to be Eastern Standard Time. Okay, so Wednesday at 8 p.m., Saturday at noon. And one of these days, Wednesday or Saturday, we're going to get a little bit deeper. And we're going to talk about his name. And we're going to talk about why you should be using his name. I'm not condemning anyone. I can't condemn you. I'm not pointing my finger. I'm not doing any of that. I'm not saying I can't judge you. That's different from condemnation. Condemnation. What I'm saying is I'm not even trying to judge you though. What? I, but I. But you know, Christians can judge. They can. And I did a podcast on that. Okay. Go ahead and read Matthew seven. Like read it all. Read it all. Don't just stop at the first one where it says be not judged. Like, no, no, no. Read the whole thing. Okay. Now, what I'm basically saying is. <laughs> Catch me on Wednesdays or on Saturdays. We're going to go more in depth into his name. As I learn, I'm going to share. I think it's not just for me. It's for the body of Christ. Whoever he calls to listen to this podcast. Um, Whoever subscribes, I appreciate. Who is ever sharing these videos, I appreciate. Who's ever commenting, I appreciate. I am here and I will do my best to respond. I just thank you all. I would never say follow me, but you can go with me into these love letters and we can get an understanding together.